Okay, hello. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to run through the, uh, as quickly as I can, run through the key features of the ET300, the uh, eCollar Technologies Mini Educator um, remote training collar. And what we have here is we have the um, familiar circular transmitter and we have the receiver collar as worn by the dog. Um, to turn the collar on, I'm going to um, assume that if you have one of these, you've already looked at it and you realise that you have contact points uh, to deliver the um, stimulation to the dog um, and the actual aerial and the um, stimulation dial and everything that makes up the transmitter. So I'm going to run through the features, not the actual components. So in order to turn the transmitter on, you can see that we're not on at the moment. If I turn it around, I have a big on-off button at the back and I'm going to press that for a couple of seconds. Then I'm going to turn around and my collar's now come to life. In order to switch on my receiver unit, I have a red dot on the side of the transmitter. And you can see that I also have a red dot here on the actual collar itself. So when I touch these two red dots together, you'll see the green light come on on the uh, receiver collar. And it will start to blink green about every second or so, every 1.5 seconds. When I touch the two red dots again, the collar will go red. That now switches off. The receiver collar, the part that the dog wears, that is how we switch that one on and off, is by touching these two red dots together. The little red dot on the side there and the dot on the top of the collar. So we're going to turn it back on. So we now have the receiver collar uh, turned on and we have the transmitter turned on as well. Dial on the top here, as I turn this you can see, adjust the stimulation, turns the stimulation level up and down from zero right the way up to high, which is 100. Okay, so I'm going to turn it back down and I'm just going to show you the other things that are in the window here. So while I have, you see the little 1D that's flashing at the top there. Uh, what that basically means is that as long as that's flashing, it means that I can adjust the stimulation. The stimulation isn't locked and it refers to one dog because the unit is capable of being paired up to uh, twin collars so it can become a two dog system. But this tells me that I'm operating the, the one collar here for the one dog. It's not a two dog system. It's paired up to, a, uh, to work as a single dog unit at the moment. So you'll also see that I've got M in the window, the letter M. I have the letter C and I have number 14, which changes as I turn the dial clockwise and anti-clockwise, which represents the stimulation level that the collar is going to deliver. Now, I'm going to switch on the back here, on the back of this unit, you'll see a little button next to the main on off and it says M and C. Now, I'm going to switch that one as I'm showing you from the front. And what you will see is that as I push it, I switch from just an M to just a C to an M and a C and again to an M to a C to an M and a C. OK, what M stands for is momentary. Uh, which means like a flash stimulation. So I'm going to press down this stimulation button on the top here, which is the one that's above the red button, and I want you to look at the red light that comes on this collar, okay? So I'm going to press and hold it now. That's what I get. So I'm going to release, and I'm going to press and hold again now. That's what I get. That's what the M gives me. It gives me a momentary or a flash stimulation. Now the red button here when I've got M and C in the window, the red button becomes my C or my continuous. So when I press the stimulation on C, if you watch the receiver collar, you'll see that I'm delivering a continuous sensation from the transmitter to the collar until such a time as I take my finger off the button. When I depress the button again, I'm delivering sensation. When I release the button, the sensation stops. I can flick or I can press and hold. OK, so it's entirely dependent on when I'm pressing that button. Personally, most of the time, I just have my collar set on the continuous only. And what happens when I'm on the continuous only is my top button now, rather than um, having a momentary or a continuous, I only have the option of continuous. OK, so when I press my top button, say I'm on level nine, I press it in and I'm delivering a continuous stimulation at number nine. My bottom button, if I take this for simplicity, if I take this to a number 10, my bottom button, the red button, when I'm just in the continuous mode or just in the momentary mode, becomes a boost. It becomes a boosted sensation. And the default of that boost is five points higher than what is represented in the window of the transmitter. So my continuous, the black button, as I press and hold, I'm delivering stimulation on 10. If I want to boost, I press my red button and you'll see that I jump to 15. Okay, so 10 is my continuous stimulation, 
15 allows me, with the touch of a button, to jump five points higher. Now that stimulation boost is capable of being set anywhere to between 0 and 60 points on the stimulation dial. So you're looking at situations where you have a dog that responds um, and you're training on very low levels. So you're around about 5 to 15, 20, something like that. But perhaps you have a dog that is stimulated um, by cats or chasing vehicles, something that you're working on, chasing livestock, and you need to have that emergency measure there um, if you're working in situations where that distraction is liable to um, present itself, perhaps without your being aware of it, and you need to immediately deliver a stimulation um, as a correction towards your dog. And it needs to be at a high enough level to create um, an aversion, uh, uh, an aversive association that you're intentionally creating. So that's what the boost button is there for. So if I take myself down to four, I'll deliver the stimulation on four. And when I press the boost, I'm going to go five points higher to nine. Okay. The single button on the side here with the T is basically my vibration button. And that's what I do. I get the collar vibrating, okay, as I press that. Um, great for dogs that are sensitive uh, to the stimulation, although the vast majority of dogs, um, if they are sensitive to the stimulation, because the stimulation could be dropped very low to barely perceptible, um, you will get great responding on dogs which are very sensitive to novelty. The vibration is quite pronounced. You can hear that, right? So that is like a quite a pronounced pager on your mobile phone. Um, uh, great for deaf dogs. If you're training deaf dogs and you want to actually use the vibration as a command rather than any form of um, correction or pressure for the dog. So you just want it to be a command only. So there's your vibration. The single button is my vibration. The top button on the side there is my stimulation and the red button is my boosted stimulation. As I turn this dial as shown, then I get my stimulation turning up and down. And if I want to lock my stimulation, I'm going to press down on the top here and I'll see the numbers flash. There we go. Once that's flashed, I can now turn this dial up and down and the stimulation doesn't move. It's locked at the number where I push the dial down. Now, one point that's important to remember or to be aware of is that as I'm twisting this dial around here and I've locked it at 13, when I unlock it, the actual number in the display will then be wherever it would have been. So I unlock and I'm now at 50 because I'm twiddling around here. And although I'm locked and can only deliver the sensation at 13, as I twiddle, so the stimulation level in the actual unit um, is prepared to deliver at the level that I last turned the dial to when I unlock. So just be aware that if you lock your sensation at 10 and then you twiddle around your dial for whatever reason and you unlock it, it will be at wherever it was when you finish twiddling around with the dial. Okay, um, just as I say, from a safety point of view, it is something to be aware of. Um, uh, let's have a look at one other feature on here, which is the light. On the back here, I've got on, off and light. So if I press this for about half a second, you'll see that I get a flashing light now. A tracking night light comes onto the collar and I can toggle that feature. If I press this button again, now I get a continuous light. And if I press it again, the light comes off. I press again, half a second, I get the flashing light. I press again, I get the continuous light. I press again, the light comes off. Okay, when it comes to actually um, certain features that I'm not gonna go through in this little clip, um, but they're things that you can look at in the instruction manual, such as setting and adjusting the boost level on the collar um, to suit your particular requirements. I recommend that if you're new to working with a remote collar that you keep the boost level at the five points higher that it comes with. So if I'm six and I'm going to go to 11, keep it at that. Because whilst I'm getting used to that collar, I don't want to uh, be in a position where I can inadvertently deliver a stimulation level that's higher than required by accidentally until I'm uh, used to the uh, feel of the collar and the way that the collar works by accidentally pressing the boost button. So until I'm comfortable and until I'm confident and I know exactly what I'm doing and my dog understands the feel of the collar, I'm working on the collar, then I'm going to leave the boost button as is. Uh, one last thing just to show you. If I press and hold this stimulation button here, okay, on five, then I can roll this dial up and roll this dial down, delivering continuous stimulation at the level shown as I do so. Okay, so it isn't necessary that I press no, turn, press, no, turn, press, no, turn. The idea with these collars and the rear stat dial is that they're very smooth. So when I turn it on, I can roll it up, 
I can roll it back down until I find the correct level of responding for my dog, particularly in emergency situations or in situations where I want to um, deliver a correction um, for, uh, you know, uh, uh, for the actual sake of a correction. So the dog's done something wrong and I need to let them know because they understand the behavior that they should be doing. Well, rather than me guessing at what level would be corrected for the dog, I can actually hold the button down and dial up until I see the response which allows me to then know that that's the level that my dog responds to in terms of a correction in those circumstances. I'm not gonna go into it anymore because I'm aware of the fact that it can get quite complex. It is a simple system to use. It is extremely reliable, very robust, um, and I trust these collars 100%. So if you have any questions at all, then give me a shout, um, jamie at taketheleadtraining.co.uk, and I will do anything that I can to help you out. Thank you.